What's going on, Corn Dog Nation? Welcome back to our Deep Fried Dugout Chatter podcast. This is episode eight, coming at you live on Tuesday, January 9th. No school today, limited access to work today. Had to cancel practice today, Coach. What'd you think of that? <laughs> I was a little bummed. My kids were excited. We were we got out on the field. We got after it at Butler High School yesterday. And, you know, um, attitudes were up, but they also were very excited to miss school. So, you know, win, win, we'll get after it tomorrow. I think that's a common theme across um, the Southeast today. The kids were were happy they didn't have to go to school today. But um, the always too. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong, Coach. Um, but, you know, with the day off today, this, this provided an awesome opportunity to get back on the mic. Um, throw some things at you guys, talk a little baseball, talk sports in general. Uh, we had a pretty good uh, pretty good listening to our last podcast. We threw it on YouTube. We have all our episodes now live on YouTube. You guys can check out the Co- Queen City Corn Dogs podcast um, on our channel. We also have all of our college games from last summer archived on there if you are interested in listening to Jonah Weintraub on the call. And uh, that'll be our uh, home for all of our college games this summer. But this is episode eight. We're going to dive into a few different things. But first, Coach, I want to know, man, were, were you pulling for the Michigan Wolverines last night or the Washington Huskies? You know, I, I really don't have a dog in a fight. I, I liked watching Michael Penix play a little bit. Um, you know, I, I know some people that graduated from Michigan, so it was a win-win. I like Jim Harbaugh. Like, you know, it was, a, it was a good football game. It's been a really good college football season and playoff. So just a lot of fun to watch. I hear you. You know, I think the fourth quarter kind of got out of hand a little bit, but for the most part, it was a you know highly competitive game. I, you know, towards the beginning, I wasn't sure if Washington was going to be able to hang in there, but um, you know, ended up being a good game. I always kind of tend to pull for those West Coast teams. I think they're a little less physical, a little less, um, you know, resource wise, they're still there, but they're never as physical and and as athletic as the teams down on this side of the country. Um, same kind of goes for college baseball, but I wanted Washington to win, but. Um, you know, it was a good game, and it was a good good night to stay up late and, and watch some football. Um, one other non-baseball note, I wanted to shout out the Charlotte 49er basketball team. We had a huge, huge win at Halton Arena on Saturday night over Florida Atlantic, who was a Final Four team last year. And unfortunately, I was not able to attend. Neither were you, Coach, where I know, you know, both of us tend to go to a lot of Niner basketball games. I'm a season ticket holder myself, and – um you know, we we upset 17th ring FAU is a big win for Coach Fern and his team, and I think that could get them going in the right direction. It was great. I was watching it in the airport there in uh, in Dallas, and and hoping for the best, expecting the worst. But you know what? Sometimes we get a pleasant surprise. So that was good. I think it was the first ranked <laughs> win at Halton Arena in like 10 years since we beat Temple back in the Atlanta 10 days, and you might have been at that game. Bobby Lutz grabbed the mic right after that game, and he said, the Niners are back. <laughs> and it was all downhill from there. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> but then, you know, the next fall, we beat number six, Tennessee, um, uptown yeah, at the cable box. So That's right. I remember that stuff. one. Um, <laughs> so, you know, just wanted to give those guys a shout out. Love Charlotte 49er Athletics. Um, I'm planning on going out there tomorrow. We got Tulsa at home. Um, but my wife said, maybe, maybe you shouldn't go out there because they beat FAU without you. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to have to make that decision in the next 24 hours, whether I want to stay home and watch that game along with the state Carolina game, or if I want to, you know, be a true Niner fan and head out to Halton. So we'll kind of see how the next, next few hours go. And, um, but that's going to kind of lead us, you know, we weren't able to go to that game Saturday night, but, um, you know, coach Benson and I coach cook as well. Um, We were able to attend the American Baseball Coaches Association convention, the ABCA convention in Dallas, Texas. Um, You know, this was just an awesome experience for coaches all over the country. There's 15,000 members in the ABCA. Um, For those of you that are not aware, there were about eight or 9,000 of those coaches under one roof this past weekend at the Gaylord Convention Center in Dallas. Um, I flew down Thursday night. I think Coach Benson, you flew down Wednesday, and we kind of stayed through Saturday or Sunday, and we got to see a ton of speakers. So, you know, kind of what are, what are your first initial thoughts, Coach, after after an awesome weekend, you know, learning and getting to hear some from some awesome folks in the game? Man, the the first thing that that really resonates with me is is how wonderful the people are in baseball. You know, we saw, 
you know, a lot of the the high school coaches in the area, you know, if you're listening to this, we probably saw your high school coach. Um, you know, the very few and far between, um, you know, are, are high level coaches not attending this. And even some of the ones that that weren't able to go this year were texting us the whole time. What's going on? Like, who's good? Who's bad? What are you learning? What are you taking back? And, you know, the ABCA is, has really transformed our game. There would be no College World Series without those guys. It's it's an organization that's been around for 80 years now. And, um, you know, the game would not look like what it does today, especially at the amateur level uh, without those guys. But, you know, it's always kind of the kickoff to the season and kind of that that thing that gets everybody going. You know, high school coaches are there, college coaches are there, even some pro guys. So um, really good stuff. What do you think, Coach Hull? Yeah, I mean, the ABCA is just an awesome, awesome organization. They're actually headquartered in Greensboro, North Carolina, um, which is pretty cool. So when they run their barnstormer clinics, um, which are some smaller little off clinics throughout the year, they did one at Charlotte in October. Um, I can usually attend those. And, you know, they, they usually are around the area since they're in Greensboro. But um, those guys have done an unbelievable job just growing the game. And to get to sit in the same room as – you know, a national championship coach like Jay Johnson from LSU or Tim Corbin from Vanderbilt. And I sat literally in the row in front of Chris Pollard from Duke in front, you know, during one of the speakers. I mean, it's just, it's really, really cool experience for, for baseball nerds like us. Um, Absolutely. Well, and then on that note, you know, we're doing a podcast now, but the, the OG baseball podcaster, Jeremy Sheinger, we saw him multiple times. And then, um, you know, Ryan Brownlee runs the ABCA he currently does the podcast and it does an awesome job. Awesome job. Yeah, 100%. I mean, and so it kind of, I guess we got in. I wasn't there Thursday night. We have, there. they have divisional meetings for the high schools and different levels of college, you know, junior college up through division one. Um, they do rules meetings and different things like that. Were you able to attend any of that stuff on Thursday night? Yeah. So we, the high school meeting, they basically kind of, um, oftentimes we're, we're controlled by what's called the national federation and FHS oftentimes are lobbying at that to make changes and things like that for the colleges. This is really where they're um, diving in. It's, it's their annual rules meeting that they must be in attendance for. We have one of those in North Carolina. Um, but the NFHS is really taking suggestions. So things like this spring, you're going to see, um, the technology coach to catcher communication. Um, that's where stuff like that gets legalized and lobbied for and, and, things of that nature yeah i attended when i was coaching in college we had to go um and i attended when i was out there for that stuff for the rules meetings but i haven't been since i usually try to work thursday and i didn't get down there till late um but that you know we woke up friday morning the first speaker of the convention is always the national champion from the college um division one college world series so last year lsu won if you guys remember tommy tanks and and those guys on that squad so jay johnson um, who took over that program the last couple of years from Ari after he was at Arizona. Um, he spoke first on Friday morning and he kind of set the tone um, for the, you know, for the rest of the weekend. He talked about a few different things that I noted um, just when he got the job, he kind of wrote down what he needs to get done that day. And then also what he can, you know, try to get done within the next five years. But basically all that stuff that Jay was trying to do at LSU was just, you know, to set standards and develop a process of winning, which obviously ultimately led to a, um, national championship within a couple years. Um, you know, his kind of blueprint for success, which I love coach. I mean, he talked about recruiting, obviously at that level, you got to recruit, you got to develop, you got to make your players better when they're there. But if you recruit the right, right way, you probably don't have to do as much developing. It's kind of what we've seen at the, the highest ranks. Um, then he touched on when that means what's important now. So that's just kind of the daily process of what they're doing at LSU. And then repeat was the fourth step. So recruit, develop, win, and repeat. And, you know, I think LSU is doing a great job. He did a good job with it at uh, Arizona as well. But um, I, I love – I always love listening to the national champion speak first. Tim Corbin did it a couple years ago. Um, last year it was um, – God, the one last year was really good. Who spoke last year to open it up? Mississippi State. Um, what's no, his name? Ole Miss. Ole Miss, yes, yes, yes. Because uh, he talked about Skip, yes, Bianco talked about his relationship with Skip Bertman, and um, that was that was unbelievable. Because Skip Bertman, if you don't know, is one of the all time greats in college baseball, and uh, Mike Bianco played for him. And talking about you know modeling some of those things, and when Skip Bertman got to LSU, baseball was an afterthought. And then today, 
Um, you know, obviously LSU just won a national championship. They lead the nation in attendance most years. And, you know, I think we'd all in, in the game of baseball like to see a game at Alex Box Stadium. But um, That's yeah. one of my dream places to play. That's on my bucket list. I, I got to see an SEC game at the box. Yeah. And, and one of the things that really stands out to me about Jay Johnson is how authentic he is. I mean, a lot of people um, heard him say immediately after they win the national championship, he says, if you're a good player in the portal, come to LSU. And, you know, that's kind of, it speaks a lot to the nature of, of college baseball, how much our game is changing, but also in order to be successful, how much you have to roll with those punches, accept those changes and kind of make the best out of it. But, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, I had a couple other speakers that I wanted to touch on, but I mean, coach, who was, who was your favorite speaker of the weekend? Man, I'm going to, I'm going to give a shout out to Dave Esker. Um, he's the head coach at Stanford. Um, you know, listening to him talk about their program standards and the, the biggest thing he said that kind of stood out to me is in their program, um, you, they expect guys to be a spotter, you know, referencing the weight room. But he talked about being a spotter in the classroom and, and you know, in the at where you're eating and, um, you know, with behavior, with, with you know, if I'm going out to a party, am, am I doing the right thing? And just checking your teammates and having that accountability program wide. Um, Coach Esker um, is a friend of one of my assistant, former assistant coaches. And, you know, it was a good I, I got to meet him and, and talk to him. But it, it was really good stuff really applicable to a, to a high school level and, and some things you could really take home. Um, my other favorite was, was Jerry Weinstein. Um, you know, he's, he's at the pro level with the Rockies, but he's, he's at a level where they've got, you know, five coaches for every position. So the resources are a little bit different, but everything he says is a nugget of absolute gold. Oh yeah. He's a great follow on Twitter. If you're, if you're a catcher, Jerry Weinstein, I, I was trying to, I was scrolling through my phone here, coach. He took a selfie with coach Esker. And I was trying to find it <laughs> to show the audience, but for some I, reason, I, I didn't take it. that selfie. Esker took it. <laughs> ah, no wonder it was a little blurry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, a couple, couple speakers I loved um, first off. Well, they're, they basically at the convention, there's a main stage, which, you know, you can fit nine or 10,000 people in there. And then they have some break off stages and different clinics, exhibit halls. Um, I really enjoyed the youth coaches session, um, which was in the grapevine ballroom kind of right down the hall. It, you know, probably fits only about a thousand people in there, but um, I was able to hear two really good folks in that, on that stage. Number First was Zach Dillon. He was, he's an assistant baseball coach at Baylor university down in Waco. Um, and he talked about the race to six and the race to six basically was, you know, the offense at Baylor, what they're trying to do each game is to get to six runs. If they, they believe from a number standpoint over, you know, looking at data over the last few years, if they get to six runs, they're going to win a baseball game. You know, whatever the percentage was, it was 85% of the time or something like that. Um, so he touched on a lot of things of how to build a dynamic team offense you know, find ways to win no matter the circumstances, whether that's moving runners or just, you know, obviously hitting the ball out of the yard or whatever it takes, right? But when he kind of challenged me a little bit, you know, being a first-year head coach at Catholic, like look back over some historical data over the last couple of years, figure out that what that number would be for us at Catholic and then chase that number. The race to, maybe it's only the race to five at Catholic or the race to four, you know, kind of depends on your program. But that was the first speaker that really stood out to me. I loved loved Coach Dillon there. And then the second one that I loved on the U stage was Drew Breezy from Center College. Center College is a Division three school out in Kentucky. Um, the kid I coached on the Legion team a couple summers ago from Carmel Christian. Aiden Christmas actually plays at Center. Um, but Drew Breezy, he played at Center College, coached at Birmingham Southern, which was a Division three powerhouse. And then he's got the head job back at center, but he just touched on all sorts of, you know, practice planning and different drills that would be applicable to, you know, smaller colleges or high school programs to where you're not equipped with the resources of a division one program, but you're able to make do with, you know, what you have. And he kind of showed us some different practice formats that he runs through um, and, you know, some different things he does when they have to go inside for practices, too, when they're limited with space. He he coached with USA Baseball. He touched on some of that stuff as well. I think he coached the 15U team last summer. Um, but just really cool to see those two guys, um, two guys I had never heard of, and I wasn't really expecting to, you know, come away from much from them. But those were the two that stood out to me um, over the weekend. Yeah, that's really good. You know, a couple other guys, Matt Tallarico is 
an elite base running guy. I think we all sat in that session together and he works yeah. with the Yankees now, but he's, he's changed base running in baseball everywhere. And then, you know, two guys I saw on the youth stage, um, you know, and I, I'd heard RJ before RJ Farrell is a coach at orange Lutheran, which is one of the top high school programs in the country, but he's also a coach with USA baseball. And, um, you know, Logan Stout with Dallas Patriots, I think sometimes, you know, parents and, and, and people think that we have these like, um, beefs or whatever with other travel orgs but i like to listen to those guys because you know dallas patriots has done a great job for a very long time and you know you can learn a lot about building a successful program when you listen to guys like that. yeah yeah absolutely i listened to uh jeff petty last year yes i think we were in yeah. there together he runs the canes organization which obviously has been very successful but a lot of this like we were sitting there last year i remember when, when we were in nashville like man a lot of the stuff petty does with the canes mm -hmm. is similar to what we do just at a you know a different scale um so it's it's really cool to see and listen to people whether it's you know the head coach at lsu or somebody with the new york mets or the braves or or a mm -hmm. high school in california like there's a lot of similar things that we're doing or travel organizations right there's a lot of similar things we're doing with our high school programs that we're doing with these really really good programs as well as our travel team here with the corn dogs. Um, you know, it's just it's just a great opportunity to learn and take back some things and, you know, try to figure out what we're doing well, what we can improve on. And, you know, what I've heard too, coach, you may you've probably heard this too. It's like, you know, they have other conventions for football coaches, basketball coaches. And I've heard the baseball one is just totally different in in an aspect of the coaches don't have egos. Like guys are willing to share. You go to a football convention, um, you know, the high, the high school coach in Texas isn't going to share his offensive scheme or what he's trying to do defensively against this team, right? Like every every speaker you hear in baseball is willing to share stuff, whether it, you know, and it may be Jay Johnson at LSU speaking to Mississippi State and Ole Miss. They're going to play them three times every year. And they're not worried about giving, I guess, a competitive advantage to those other programs. I, I think that's a really cool aspect of baseball coaches. Absolutely. One, one of my favorite things about our convention is, it's just a different group of people. They open the convention every year by singing God bless America. And, you know, every year I'm there and every year it just kind of um, sends a chill down your spine, but all of these guys are kind of there. You know, you can walk right up to Dave Esker and he'll take a selfie with you. You can walk right up to Tim Corbin or Chris Pollard, Tim Corbin and Chris Pollard are there taking notes when some high school coach from some other part of the country is speaking as if, you know, um, the most important person in the world is up there. G greatness leaves clues. Very few people in baseball are not willing to help and and wanting to help you get better. One hundred percent, man. One hundred percent. And um, this is the second year that I was able to take my wife Cassidy down. Coach Cook also brought Angela, his wife, and I know your wife Janelle wasn't able to make it, but um, it was really it, it's cool to bring our wives down. My Cass and. Angela were able to go to Waco and see Chip and Joanna Gaines's Magnolia Market, and while we were at the coaches, you know, coaches co convention, and um, we even got to see a rodeo. Coach, you ever been to a rodeo? I have not, but Fort Worth was that's a cool city. Um, the barbecue was awesome. The um, you know the music everywhere was great. Uh, we saw the John Wayne Museum. It was a it was a good time. Uh, downtown Fort Worth was was definitely worth it. Yeah, 100%. Um, what do you think of the Expo Theater? So for those of y'all that don't know, they have an Expo. Well, they have the Expo Theater. Let me let me explain this real quick. Expo Theater has different companies, and then they have speakers talk on different products or different things that they do. Like I sat in on a Rapsodo one with Kyle Wright, who pitched for the Braves. He's now with the Royals, and he kind of spoke on what he does with Rapsodo. Um, and then they also have the Exhibit Hall, which has all sorts of products and software companies and different things that people are trying to do in baseball, basically, you know, different sales folks with those companies. Um, I know we've bought a few products um, in the exhibit hall, but I'm able to get a ton of stuff, for, you know, or at least this year I was from the expo theater and the exhibit hall. Was there anything that stood out to you this year, coach? Man, just an unbelievable amount of interest in our game. Number one, there was a whole row of media this year. I've never seen that before. Um, so media availability, podcasts, all sorts of stuff. Perfect game was actually um, recording live all weekend. Um, so that was really cool. Hunter Pence was hosting a show. And um, so just unbelievable exposure to our game, which is growing every single day. 
Um, that expo theater, I'll be honest, I didn't spend as much time there this year because it was very, very crowded. Um, membership in our organization has grown substantially. I did see some good things. I love the pitch logic baseball. It's something I use at Butler a lot. I know we've used it with the corn dogs. Um, their product is just getting better and better as it improves, but walking around that expo theater, you know, you really just get the sense of how much technology is involved in our game today. Um, you know, talking, I, I've got some friends on the staff at Duke and talking to those guys about, you know, Synergy, 643, um, all of these different technological investments that, you know, as you grow and you play this game and you attend these recruiting events, you're not just getting compared to the other players in North Carolina. You're truly um, getting compared to everybody in the country. So that's big scale. That's stuff that's really – um, you know, impacting us minimally, but stuff that we can use every day. Of course, we got the coach to catch our communication. Um, but my favorite thing I saw in there was this group. Uh, it's called Always Grind. And they had all these different little notebooks um, available for purchase. They had uh, a hitter's log, pitcher's log, um, it just unbelievable stuff, great for reflection. The little things that coaches ask you to do all the time, uh, but it was just consolidated into notebooks. I thought it was a really good idea. They didn't necessarily reinvent the wheel, but they made the wheel turn faster, if that makes sense. Um, but, yeah, that, I, to me, that was the most practical thing I saw. The coolest company I saw that I had never heard of before was uh, – it was called Jaw. They were like baseball bats. But they had some really cool T-shirts, some really cool um, wood bats, some really good stuff. Definitely worth a follow on Instagram if that's more your speed. Yeah, I have not heard of y'all. I did not. I did not get to run into those guys. But uh, my my favorite part about, I guess, more of the exhibit hall, right, um, is being able to see all the companies that we work with from the corn dog side of things. So, um, first off, like virtual combine, which we use with our with our showcase players to house all of their data and metrics. Um, we'll have an email coming out in the next week or so too in regards to that for this coming year. Um, but Ben from virtual combine played at the university of Texas. Um, he's an, he's an awesome dude and we kind of work hand in hand, but if it wasn't for the convention, I would really never get to meet him in person. So obviously we have calls throughout the year, um, but got to meet up with him, got to speak with some folks from Gipper. Gipper is a social company. Um, you know, that we, I use a lot of their stuff with the corn dogs and with, um, Charlotte Catholic baseball. So they just, you know, walk through some different things of how to get, get the most out of social media basically and get more impressions with different things. Um, I also sat in, I, I mentioned with uh, Rap Soto, they were speaking on, with Kyle Wright. I, I talked with those folks as well. I, I've invested in Rap Soto um, or we have invested with Rap Soto on the hitting side and the pitching side. We're going to use that stuff with the corn dogs as well as my high school teams at Catholic. Um, always good to see the folks from Blast as well. You know, we're going to use Blast again to, with some of our guys um, and just having little things like that. Um, or at least access to little things like that at the, tr at the trade show um, is really cool. And um, just to continue to build those connections and, you know, see those, you know, see those folks or those sales guys, you know, every year, right at this time of year. So. Um, hey, and I guess yeah, I meant to say ahead. this too, Ed, you know, one of the coolest things about walking around at convention hall, you know, we all, you know, typically what I do is one day I wear my Butler stuff. One day I wear my corn dog stuff. Well, that day you wear the corn dog stuff, people point, you know, you can see it like our, our social media and branding has gone a long way, but it's really cool. Like I took this picture. It's really cool to see some groups using our branding and imaging to, um, to sell their products. Right. And there you see our logo beside Louisville and Arizona state, the Arizona diamondbacks, the angels, NC state, like and and the queen city corn dogs are right there with them coach. I thought that was pretty cool. And that was, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was with Ray's decals, right? Yes, correct. And correct. Ray's decals is who does our little helmet decals that a lot of you guys have. So um, I, I think our logo stands out. I mean, the brand awareness we've developed has, has been huge and people don't forget about it, man. Like we walked up to to the folks with Wilson who, you know, do our uniforms with they, Wilson on Devo Shield, ATEC, Louisville Slugger, Dean Marini, and and I was like, hey, man, I'm, you know, Eddie Hole with the corn dog. I'm like, man, the corn dogs, man. Like, I know exactly who you guys are. Thank you so much for your business. Thank you for providing, you know, your families, our products. Um, so just really cool that, I mean, he wouldn't have known who I was if I just told him my name. But when I say corn dogs, it was immediate. Um, <laughs> he knew exactly who we were. I mean, he could tell tell us exactly what our uniforms looked like. So 
Um, it was cool. We also saw some of the new pieces of, of gear that are, that are launched in our fan store. If you guys um, have not purchased any fan gear or your uniforms yet for this year through Wilson, there's some awesome new pieces in there. Um, go ahead. I mean, we'll continue to open those stores, you know, every few weeks if you don't want to order your uniforms yet, but um, when a store opens, you'll get those uniforms, you know, six weeks after opening days of that store. So, um, but again, man, the convention in Dallas this year was awesome. Next year, it's in Washington, D.C. We going next year, Coach? It's it's going to be cold. Um, I'm going to have a <laughs> I'm going to have a certainly different lifestyle change, but we'll see. It, that's going to be up to uh, Mrs. Benson there. Uh, have we have <laughs> we told Corn Dog Nation what that lifestyle change looks like? Uh, I'm not sure or not, but I'm expecting a little girl May 30th. So it's, it's, it's going to be a fun summer. It's going to be a very fun summer. We cannot be happier for the Benson family. And, uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing her in the dugout early June, fresh oh, yeah. you know, when she gets home, man. I'm <laughs> so I know it's going to be a busy summer for you heading into summer baseball with Amber. We're excited for you guys. Um, that's about it from the convention coach. Those were my notes I had. Um, I guess next we're going to, we do have our winter workout starting up with the corn dogs. We touched on this stuff a little bit last week, but um, this Sunday we'll have our first winter workout. You know, we'll do five Sundays of just, you know, conditioning the arm, getting some offensive swings back on, you know, moving the body the right way with baseball stuff. But I mean, coach, you, I know you would second this. You can't, this can't be the only day a week you guys are preparing for middle school or high school tryouts. Yeah, hundred percent. And that, that's something I try to echo. I even sent a letter home with my family's last week. It's just, um, especially if your kid is in CMS, they're going to have a dead period here. It's like January 17th, 18th through like the 23rd. Please don't stop throwing during that time. Like we, in this day and time of, of arm injuries and, you know, Tommy John surgeries have skyrocketed. I've been, that's been my latest baseball rabbit hole. I've been diving down and it's amazing how many more surgeries and it is exponentially more since 2011. Um, you know, that's when that surgery really became public on the scene. And when it became a, a very common thing for, for teenagers to get this surgery, but that's not a good thing. That's that just because it's common does not mean it's something that we want. Right. And those injuries are, are typically either caused by overuse or underuse. Right. So, with the corn dogs, I think we do a really good job of policing arm care, making sure that we don't have coaches that are running your kid out there for, you know, 105 pitches every every Saturday. It's a bad idea. Um, you know, and then the underuse piece though, that's what we're seeing a lot of um a lot of these from. And what what that means is I'm not taking care of my arm, I'm not warming up properly. And then I show up at this random tryout in February and try to whip the ball across the infield from shortstop, right? It's just, it's not a good idea. Um, if your arm's not in good shape, that's when those injuries can occur. One of my very best friends um, played in an adult 40 and over baseball league. Um, he only intended to throw one inning about 30 pitches, but he was throwing in no hitter, right? That's one of the biggest things we get flagged for in travel ball. Sometimes we'll, we'll pull a guy during a no hitter, right? Well, he kept going for seven innings and about 115 pitches and three days later he's in the hospital. So um, that is certainly, uh, you know, it's one thing when you're 40 years old and we can, you know, joke with him and laugh about that uh, because it was a decision that he absolutely made for himself. But when these guys are 12 and 13 and 14, that's, it's very different. It is not something that we want to encourage or whatever. So please, you know, we're going to have our workouts on Sunday, but I would say at least four days a week. Get out there, throw a little bit, and, and don't go straight to the mound, right? Week one, let, let's throw nice and easy back to about 90 feet. Week two, let's push it a little bit more. Week three, maybe we hop up on that mound a little bit. But I, I tell my my kids in my program, it's it's like cooking meat, you know, low and slow, right? And then it's like shaving. When, once you start shaving – you can't stop until you're trying to grow a beard, right? Um, when you're when you're keeping that arm warm, when you stop, it's time to stop. And if you're going to start back up again, your your face is going to look terrible, right? In between shaving at random intervals, right? It's something you you've got to commit to or not. I like the metaphors there. I like that a lot. You're good. You, you always have some good one liners. <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> I, I mean the biggest good thing, or bad, coach. 
Yeah. I mean, just for example, and before we wrap up, I mean, say you have, you know, middle school baseball tryouts starting February 12th, you need at least two weeks of bullpens before that. I mean, I would say three or four pins during those two weeks before that, if not more. So, I mean, you know, my, again, my high school guys, I think I said last week, my high school guys this week, we, we got back doing flat ground work. Okay. We we're, we're long tossing. We're working it back in. Then we throw in flat grounds this week. We started yesterday indoors. Um, in about two weeks, I'll probably get back, get up on the mound and elevate us. If, if not on the back end of next week and elevate those guys a little bit. Um, I, I do think the more you throw on the mound, the better, but that's all depends on our workload on the front end of that. Um, middle school guys, I honestly probably wouldn't touch the mound until that week of the 22nd of January at the earliest. And then you could, if we can get a couple bullpens during the week or you throw one during the week and we can get you one on Sundays, um, you know, at Latin or at top velocity where we're training. So, um, if you have questions about throwing programs or plans, please reach out to either one of us. We're happy to discuss. I mean, you know, we've, we pull stuff from all sorts of different coaches, whether it's at the ABCA or different coaches that we work for. So we'll try to keep our guys as healthy as possible and give you guys the the best resources in order to do that. Um, but we're always receptive to those things. Um, what else, Coach? I feel like I had one more thing on my mind. Is there anything else you can think of? I think that's about it. We're just kind of rolling right into the high school season and, you know, um, you know, unfortunately, everybody's got the day off. And, you know, that's kind of what we say. Everybody's going to have a day off every once in a while. But you just got to make sure one day doesn't turn into three in a row or five in a row or ten in a row. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I get the last thing I was going to say, Coach, and, um, you know, if you're a parent listening or a player listening, I would highly advise you guys or highly recommend you guys to get out and watch – college baseball this spring um you know college baseball program started up their individual skill work yesterday or maybe at the division two level they may have even started team practice um, but over the next you know month and a half they're going to be full go with practices if you if you're able to get up to unc charlotte or winget or winthrop like those coaches will let you in there and you can watch them practice and see how they run things or you know end of you know mid-february i guess they open up about you know february 17th or so that weekend if you're able to get out um to any of these schools take your kids to go see these games whether it's Gaston College at the junior college level or Cleveland Community College or Wingate or Sh get out and see college baseball as much much as you can this spring if the if time allows you guys to do so because I think you know parents I think you guys can learn so much from watching the different levels of play and you can see how really freaking good college baseball players are um and then players I think you guys can kind of start to self-evaluate where you are versus where these guys are at, whether at the highest levels or, you know, the lower mid-majors to, to, you know, D2 and JUCO players. So that'll be my recommendation um, or homework for some families over the next month and a half, two months, man, get out and see some baseball. Hey, I, I can't tell you how much I agree with that. If you want to see some really high level baseball, goodness gracious, UNC Charlotte early non-conference schedule, I guess that's another plug for them, but, um, but I, I would challenge you too. Don't just go to a D1 game. Don't just ride up the street to Chapel Hill one day and say, hey, man, did, you know, uh, you know, Tommy, you you know, you're this is where you are, right? Go see a JUCO. Go see Gaston College, right? Go go to a D2. Go see Wingate, right? And pay attention to the other team as well. Um, you know, Wingate's a, a nationally renowned Division II program right in our backyard, right? And, um, you know, I think it would be a blessing for for most of our guys to get that opportunity. Um, but, you know, there's there's good college baseball everywhere, uh, you know, Division three, Division two, NAIA, what have you. Um, you know, there's there is very good college baseball everywhere. Yep. And we'll have a lot of those guys in our backyard at Latin this summer playing with our college team. Um, season tickets are on sale for that now. Um, but all of our families, if you play for the Corn Dogs, um, you guys will be allowed free into those games. So I would I. I don't think we saw enough attendance last year from our families. You know, we had a few younger nights, you know, for our younger teams, but I really, really would love to see some more of our corn dogs players out at our college games. I mean, literally we practice at Latin on the days that some of these games are held, you know, that night. So, um, you know, if you need some, need some guidance on what games to go to or, or, or whatnot on who to reach out to, just let us know, but um, get out and see some baseball this spring, this summer, um, we're we're fortunate to be able to do this podcast with you on a Tuesday. It's raining. I don't think it's storming too bad. 
Um, but man, it's baseball season. I can't wait to get get rolling and um, see these corn dog kids on Sunday. And um, Coach Benson, man, it's a pleasure pleasure doing this with you. Absolutely, Eddie, you're the man. All right, folks, that's going to be it for episode eight of our Deep Fried Dugout Chatter podcast. Um, I'm your host, Eddie Hole, with Coach Ryan Benson. And uh, as always, until next time, roll dogs.